What is a standard call flow or chat flow? A standard call or chat flow is the ideal order of things to follow in a conversation to make it seamless from beginning to end. This ensures you're not missing any critical step towards resolution and helps provide the best possible glowing experience to our clients. Now, do you need to follow the standard flow from the beginning until the end? That's a good question. To facilitate a smooth resolution, it is crucial that you follow the standard flow from the beginning to end so that you won't miss any critical step or information. For example, empathy is in step two for a reason. You'd want to acknowledge the client's feelings first before facts and resolution. It wouldn't make as much sense if you empathize towards the end of the call. Now let's look at the standard call and chat flow one step at a time. Step one is of course your opening spiel. Here you will open the call with branding. Next, introduce yourself. Ask for the client's name, address the client by name or at least once during the call, and ask how you can assist. This is where you can really make a good first impression. So start the call with a happy and accommodating tone of a voice. Ask the client how they're doing, make them feel at ease, and engage in a conversation. Make your opening strong by adding some spice to it. But make sure you practice your lines beforehand so that it sounds natural and you're confident when you're delivering them. And when it feels or sounds forced to you, tweak the lines so that it best fits your way or method of delivery. So here are some examples. How can I make you smile today? How can I provide excellent service? How can I make your day better? Now let's look at the flow of the opening portion of your call or your conversation. Welcome to Glow. My name is Anna. May I have your name? I'm Jane Smith. Hi, Jane. How are you doing today? I'm great. How about you? I feel fantastic. How can I assist you? I have a question about your membership plans. I'm trying to see which one would be best for me. Are we good? Let's move to step two, acknowledgement, empathy, and reassurance. This part happens as soon as a client relays the inquiry or concern. Immediately acknowledge the client and the concern, empathize or apologize, whichever is applicable, and reassure that you're there to help. Remember to be timely and acknowledge the client's feelings first before facts and any other things. Now, note that it's best to apologize or provide an apology statement when it's clear that you or the company caused the error or the issue. You empathize and it doesn't have to be sorry all the time when the situation is out of your control. So let's take a look at an example flow. Let's just say you're already done telling the client, how can I assist you today? What's next? I have a question about your membership plans. I'm trying to see which one would be best for me. Absolutely. I'll be happy to explain our membership plans to you. Notice how the acknowledgement is specific. Instead of saying, I'll be happy to explain that to you, you say, I'll be happy to explain our membership plans to you. Here's another example. I called days ago to cancel my membership, but it turns out it wasn't canceled at all. I'm terribly sorry that you had to go through this situation. I will help you get this resolved immediately. Step three, account or client verification. Now this is when you verify or authenticate the client based on company guidelines. You'll have a separate discussion about company guidelines for verification. Now here's a tip. Since you're asking for personal information, it's best to let the client know why you're asking for the personal information. And that is for you to be able to further assist and continue on with a call. This doesn't have to be long because this is a very common knowledge for clients who are calling. And also, please remember to say please and thank you all the time. Here are some suggested scriptings. To further assist you, can I please have your date of birth? Let me check your account. Can I please have your date of birth? Let me pull up your account to check. Can I please have your date of birth? Step four is issue resolution. This is the part where you ask for confirmation and probing questions. Make use of open-ended and closed-ended questions to get to the main cause of the issue. If it's only an inquiry, 
ensure you are giving the correct and complete information to help the client have an informed decision. Make use of your company provided resources and knowledge base to answer questions and resolve issues. And remember to use positive language and scripting when explaining things to the client and maintain a pleasant tone of voice that's appropriate for the situation. Are you familiar with open-ended and closed-ended questions? Having a mix of these two types of questions will really help you dig deeper into what the cause of the concern is. So an open-ended question is a type of question that allows you to ask for more and detailed information from your client. This usually starts with, can you please tell me more about what happened or what is the situation that you're going through right now? On the other hand, closed-ended questions are questions that have a definite answer are usually answerable by yes or no. Unlike open-ended where you ask for more information, this time for closed-ended, you want to verify and make sure that you got the information correctly. For example, you can ask, you mentioned earlier that the charge was $70, right? And that's answerable by either yes or no. Here's another tip. When explaining the resolution to your client, it is best to enumerate the steps on how you are getting to that resolution instead of just explaining it in one whole confusing statement. Then confirm understanding to ensure that both you and the client are on the same page. When the client feels good about your resolution, you will feel that in a conversation. With this kind of approach, you can gauge how the client feels about your resolution and hopefully it's a good ending for both you and the client. And if it's not, then we want to make sure that we don't end the call without providing at least some sort of comfort or partial resolution to the client's concern. So here are some suggested scriptings. Here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to. Second, I will. And finally, I will. What we can do to resolve this is that proceed to enumerate the action steps. Now, how do you confirm understanding from your client? You can say something like, does that sound good to you? How does that sound to you? Avoid asking, is that okay with you? Or are you okay with that? Because usually these can produce unfavorable responses from your client. Step number five, client education. Educate the client or any caller or chat visitor about our self-service tools such as links to your website, pages, app, social media, or other things. Now, it's important that you educate the client about what they can do in the future to avoid the same situation from happening again. Example, there were extra charges. How can they avoid this in the future? Tip, make the clients feel that you are providing these self-service tools or options because you want them to save time in the future. We definitely don't want them to feel or think that we are just pushing them away and that we don't want to help them just because we're providing these self-service tools. We definitely want to be there for them. And there's a reason that this part, client education, is right after resolution because we want to resolve the issues for them as best as we can first and then educate them on how they can avoid this same situation from happening again in the future. For example, you can say, if you have further questions, you may also check out our website for the complete information on plans and pricing. And step number six, last but not the least, we have your closing spiel. This is where you provide a recap or quick summary of the call, especially when you performed changes or maintenance on the account. If it's only a simple inquiry call, then there's no need to recap. Ask if all questions and issues have been addressed, and don't forget to close the call with branding. Here's your suggested scripting or flow. To recap, we have already processed your cancellation request for this account. Have I addressed all your concerns today? Yes, you have. Thank you. That's great to know. Thanks so much for calling Glow, and you have a wonderful day. And if it's not a cancellation request, you can make the posting even more engaging by saying, enjoy your spa session or have a safe trip. And this ends our discussion about standard call flow or chat flow.